The areas around photovoltaic generation, the ability to take energy off the roof and put it into running your light bulbs, is now a very practical option for people. These stairs have got recyclable material on, used to be uh, car tyres. Um, the building is made up largely from recyclable material, so um, energy efficiency wise it uses 60% less energy and 70% less water. So um, things like the concrete and the floor coverings and the, the glass, every, there are a very high percentage of products in this building uh, will, will, could end up in another building in the future. And I think that that approach and responsibility is, is certainly uh, creating a lot of thought in the marketplace. Cars and trucks are some of the world's main sources of greenhouse gases. In its efforts to become carbon neutral, New Zealand is targeting transport. Here, most cars are bought second-hand and imported from Japan, which, like New Zealand, drives on the left. New Zealand has the oldest, dirtiest and least efficient car fleet in the whole of the developed world. What we want to do is to halve vehicle emissions by 2040. And so that's a, it's, it's, a, it's a major exercise and that will uh, mean that the fleet has to, has to be modernised. We're going to have to um, make a lot of progress, for example, towards electric cars. The state-owned energy company Meridian says it's trying to promote the use of electric cars. We're not as clean and green as we'd like. If we look at all of the OECD countries and we rank them, Actually, New Zealand is the fifth worst on a per capita basis for greenhouse gas emissions. New Zealand is second highest in the world for car ownership. And we've almost got one car for every man, woman and child. We think there's room for improvement there. Meridian Energy is putting its faith in Japan's futuristic electric cars. One of the things that makes New Zealand the best place in the world for electric vehicles is the fact that we have an abundant supply of renewable energy. Meridian has yet to import a single electric car. Used cars continue to arrive from Japan. 56% of those on the road are 10 years or older, and emissions won't be halved until 2040. In the meantime, some businesses are going green. Green Cabs operates taxis in three cities. Its boss is Callum Brown. We run only Toyota Priuses, which are hybrid vehicles, which means they run on both a petrol engine and an electric motor, and they're, they're low emission vehicles. Us being green, and we, we don't even have to go out and get customers, they come to us. It's, it's very positive. People love it. Our current customers get a, a full breakdown of what their taxi travel was, and the number of trees that we would have planted on their behalf is a result of their taxi travel. Planting trees creates carbon credits, because trees absorb carbon. Businesses that cannot plant trees to offset their emissions can now go to New Zealand's Stock Exchange, which has just opened a carbon exchange sector. Mark Franklin is the chief executive. For the last 200 years, the world or the developing countries have had a free ride on the environment, and the world has now decided that um, it's time to pay for that. For carbon emitters, the way to pay is to come to the exchange and purchase carbon credits. It's a market solution to world pollution. Mark Franklin believes that rising carbon prices will punish the polluters and force them to clean up their act. If we use up more and more of the Earth's environment, and so what, the, what will in effect happen as there will be less credits available, the price of a credit will be higher, and it will be more of a price signal. The higher the price moves, the more innovation will occur in the world to limit emissions. Aiming to be green and clean, New Zealand is trying to increase renewable energy and curb emissions from transport. But its great challenge is agriculture. This booming industry is the major source of pollution. The big challenge for us is the 50% of our greenhouse gas emissions which comes from our agricultural sectors because that's the backbone of our economy. At Lincoln University, the government is pumping money into research on emissions from cows. 
We've collected large columns of soil from the Lincoln University dairy farm in order to allow us to measure the effects of agriculture on the environment. Over half of our greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture, and of that, one third is a gas called nitrous oxide, predominantly from animal urine deposited on the pasture and soil. And nitrous oxide, as you, as you know, is a potent greenhouse gas. It has a long-term uh, global warming potential 310 times that of carbon dioxide. And so it's a, a major issue for us as a country to reduce this greenhouse gas emission, this nitrous oxide emission. After 10 years, the scientists have found a way of inhibiting the effects of the nitrogen. And a commercial product has emerged from their research. Sprayed onto pasture land twice a year, it massively reduces the nitrous oxide gas. So here we are recording a 75% reductions in the nitrous oxide emissions from the urine patch areas. Nitrous oxide only accounts for a sixth of New Zealand's animal emissions. At this government-funded experimental farm, Harry Clark is in charge of a high-priority research program, which has also destroyed a popular myth. We don't have a large population, we don't have a lot of heavy industry, but we have this other problem which for many years people didn't realise was a problem, which are these lovely cattle and sheep. They produce methane. Despite popular myth, it, it's not coming out of the rear end. It is about 99% of the methane comes in the breath. Experiments show that 42% of New Zealand's methane emissions are exhaled by sheep, cows and other ruminants like goats, deer and llamas. Research in every part of this area is still at an early stage. It's cutting edge and at the same time we constantly rediscover very simple basic questions that people should have answered 20 or 30 years ago and so we're still addressing those questions to try and understand the whole system so that we can take it apart and then put it back together so that it functions the way we want it to without producing the methane. In 2003, the issuing of methane became a serious political issue. When the government realised that in fact we did have no solution to methane emissions from belching cows and sheep, uh, they felt that we needed to actually start raising some money and investing in research and development. And so they decided that the best way to do that was to actually tax farmers. The current government proposed to charge a levy on every farmer based on the number of animals they had, uh, and the farmers revolted. The fight tax was the fight against ridiculous taxes. We had uh, quite a few hundred people that marched down the road in Wellington. There was tractors and trucks and, and farmers. But we're showing the government something, aren't we? Aye? And uh, we all converged on Parliament buildings and one of the opposition MPs got one of the small tractors there and attempted to drive it up the steps of Parliament for which he was duly charged by the police for behaving in an unseemly manner. And, uh, yeah, eventually we got what we wanted. Clearly we don't know how long it's going to take for the science to make an impact. It, it will depend on particular discoveries and it's likely to happen uh, a bit at a time uh, rather than suddenly eureka. The truth is that we're only starting to nail the science of how to measure the amount of methane and nitrous oxide from agricultural production systems and I think it is a matter of decades rather than years before there will be the sort of breakthroughs that enable us to bring those emissions back. New Zealand will have to plant a lot of trees to offset future decades of farmyard emissions. Initial estimates would suggest uh, that we would need over the next 20 odd years uh, to, to offset the methane problem in, in our pastoral industry, I think it's somewhere between one and two million hectares of afforestation would be needed. Two million hectares is 7% of New Zealand's entire landmass. Even the greenest of greens wonder if it is doable. It's wonderful to have a big exciting goal like carbon neutral, but it means no net carbon emissions at all from New Zealand and I don't see how we're ever going to achieve that, um, certainly not within my lifetime. I think the story of New Zealand is actually a wake-up call. Anybody who says that the transition is going to be easy is wrong. Uh, this stuff is really hard. And whether you're New Zealand, whether you're the United Kingdom, whether you're China or the US, 
we've got some really hard yards ahead of us if we're going to be able to beat global warming. I'm just so thrilled that New Zealand's getting a lot of recognition offshore for being out front on a lot of these issues. We can showcase a lot of the positive developments here in policy and action to make our country more sustainable. New Zealand is seeking to show the world the way to a sustainable carbon neutral future. But no one ever said it's easy to be green. <laughs>